So now we will move on to the next step, which is cleaning up our binary mask. So now we have this binary mask, which is made up of values of only 0 and 1, or in the case of image J, values of 255 and 0. So the only thing we have here is shape information. We've taken away all of the intensity values. So all we have left is morphological information. Therefore, we can apply morphological operations to clean up our objects. So if we go to Fiji, the first thing again that we're going to do is duplicate our mask. Oops. Duplicate. And we'll work on the duplicate. And then we'll go to process binary and you'll see all the processes here. So we have erode and dilate, which will reduce and grow objects by single pixels, either smoothing out sharp edges or destroying small structures when you use them sequentially. There's also open and close, which is basically an erode and a dilate, followed, and then the other is a dilate and erode. Um, so those can be used to, again, smooth out objects um, just small, and destroying small uh, structures. We also have fill holes, which is exactly as it says. So it fills in holes. So for example, let's say it's basically if you have a donate donut shaped object that has a hole in the center, it'll fill that in. So for example, let's say you have a membrane marker of a cell. You can fill in the area of the cell using this. And just know that if your membrane ring isn't quite closed, this won't work. So then you can use erode and dilate and open and close um, to help close that membrane ring and then fill it in. Now there's also watershed. This is the one we're going to use. As you can see, we actually have, a, down here in the corner, we'll just zoom in, we have two nuclei here, um, which can, at the moment are being considered a single object. So what we want to do is actually slice them and sli put a slice right down the middle so we can separate these two objects. And that's exactly what watershed does. So we go to watershed. Um, Watershed basically is a way of automatically separating or cutting out um, or cutting apart particles that touch. So um, it basically first, first calculates the Euclidean distance map and then finds the ultimate eroded points and then dilates each of those ultimate eroded points as far as possible, either until the edge of the particle is reached or the edge touches a region of another growing um, ultimate eroded point. So the watershed segmentation works best really for smooth convex objects, so such as nuclei, um, that don't really overlap too, too much. So we can actually um, show you how it, this works. So if we'll ju just go to, uh, there's a cool way of actually seeing how it works. If we go to Edit, Options, and then Miscellaneous, we can click on Debug Mode. And then we can run the watershed. And you'll actually see, it'll form a movie and it'll actually show you how the watershed forms. So you just click move. So this is how it's actually being calculated. And you'll see now that the object's actually separated. Okay, so we're gonna just, oh, and now you'll see, yep, our object is separated when we ran the watershed. That debug mode just gave us that video so we could actually see how it worked. So in general, when you're doing these morphological operations, there's a lot of decision making on your part. Um, you can chain these operations and repeat them multiple times or use them one after another. It's really up to you as long as you're consistent in your workflow for all images. I also want to point out a fantastic collection of mathematical, mathematical morphology methods um, and plugins called MorphoLib J. MorphoLib J. So this run right here. So it includes morphological filtering, reconstruction, segmentation. I really would hi um, re highly recommend enabling this particular upsite, update site for this tool. And that's it for cleaning up our objects. So we can move on to the next step.